Okay, good afternoon. We'll go ahead and get started. I'll just give you an update. Uh, I know that probably one of the first questions will be about uh, some of the injuries here. So Josh and Josh Allen and Dean Marlowe are in the concussion protocol, as I said, uh, after the game yesterday. So um, that's where they are. And with that, we'll open it up to your questions. How much do you take into, like, start back with you know, <clears throat> Matthew Mark, uh, you know, Barkley, um, preparing, you know, Barkley for the game this weekend? Yeah, well, until we know more, you know, that's what we have to do is, is make sure that Matt's ready to go. John said yesterday that, you know, there's no place in the game for hits like that. Uh, it's been reported that he's not facing a suspension for the hit, and Bill Belichick said he doesn't know how to coach it differently. After looking back at it, yeah, no, I'm, listen, that, as far as the, some of the things that happened yesterday, I'm, I'm, I made my comment on it yesterday, and, and really out of respect for you and the job you're trying to do and you guys, um, I'm going to leave it at that, and we're, then we're going to move forward here this week. Thanks. Did you file a grievance, or did you, can you? Not, not going in. I'm not getting into it. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Just moving forward. We're going to chase the vision this week. Uh, obviously, we're going to learn from the loss, just like we learned from our wins. A lot, of, a lot of good lessons baked into that, uh, just like there were the previous three weeks. And um, so that's what the growth mindset's all about. Guys are upbeat. Um, we're going to learn from it, apply it the best we can, and, and move forward against a good Tennessee Titans team this week um, and uh, in a good environment down there. So uh, it'll be a good week of practice for us, and, um, and that's what we're looking forward to is that vision. How disappointing is it that it seemed like a lot of squandered opportunities on offense and on special teams with the with, with the, the block punt, to to squander what the defense did in holding Tom Brady to eleven you know eleven first downs and however many yards. Yeah, opportunities. I think that was the key, and, and, and execution within our fundamentals, like making sure we're carrying over our fundamentals from from practice to the game, um, and that again is what early in the season is all about. Continuing to double down on those fundamentals and the execution of the fundamentals uh, throughout the game. Are you concerned about how sloppy the offense has been at times with the ball? You know, early on, I think you're always concerned about a lot of things until you really get a, a good feel for who you are, as you heard me say, John, as it relates to um, who we are as a football team, what our strengths are, what our, where our weaknesses lie, and that we continue to develop. Um, so, um, so, yes, overall. Um, that said, I would say that that's probably true um, overall early in the year, every year, as we continue to develop. <coughs> Well, I consider him a young player that's made some good plays, Chris. You know, so let's just take it one game at a time, one snap at a time. I think that's key for young guys, right? Um, he made some really good plays yesterday, and then had some plays he'd like back. Um, so we'll just continue to take it one game at a time and and, and move forward with that in mind. On the flip side, what do you like about the identity that your defense is creating? Yeah, you know. Just the way you look at you see you saw the game the way I saw it yesterday. They played fast. They played physical. Um, they played good team defense. You know, um, and that's the way it should come together, right? I thought it was a good plan overall, and and the guys it allowed the guys to play fast and execute, and uh, and then be fundamentally sound with tackling in space. Uh, you saw a couple of really good tackles in space, really really good plays in space there. Um, so uh, good solid football overall. What was your assessment of uh, Zay <clears throat> Yesterday. Yeah, you know, I thought overall um, we had eight, what do you have, eight targets, two catches. There's some things that uh, he can do better there. There's some things that we, we can all do better, Jay, uh, in all honesty. So, um, you know, it, there's some plays in there where uh, our defense, our offense has to become our defense and, uh, and try and get some of those balls that were up there, become a defender, make sure they don't come down with it. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, we all can do a better job, and, and I know there's some plays they would like to have back. Was the interception in the second half near the sideline? It was pretty close to you. Was that one of those plays? And what was the explanation exactly for what he was doing in that play? Yeah, I mean, some of those some of those plays um, are bang bang plays. You know, you're in a position, you're not sure where the ball's going. It's going over your head, and and uh, they become bang bang plays. But I would I would like to have seen him try and make a play from a offensive player become a defensive player in that in that situation. So how close was? Got into playing this Sunday after turning a couple of practices during the week? Yeah, close. Um, you know, as I mentioned, it was going to be close coming down to the wire. Um, so, again, we'll see this week um, as we move forward one, one day at a time here. Really. John, there was a video of you before the game chasing a couple of Patriots staffers off the field uh, during warm up. What was that uh, interaction there? What were you upset about? 
Yeah, like I said earlier, Matt, again, with all due respect to your question, you guys know I have a lot of respect for you. I'm not going to go there. I mean, that um, we're moving forward, and what happened yesterday is, is in the past, and we're focused this week on, on where we're going, really. Sean, I know it's on Monday, but if Josh is going to have a lengthy stay on the concussion protocol, is there a plan to bring in another quarterback or – yeah, you know, we'll see, Brandon and I. We just need to take it one step at a time right now. You know how the protocol works, right? So um, Davis is here uh, for that reason, um, and we feel good about Davis as well. So we'll just take it one day at a time right now. Sean, with injuries in general, Josh and the others <clears throat> on the men, how much do you factor in the bye week being after the Titans game and maybe looking at things as a more extended period to allow guys to heal? Yeah, I mean that's that's part of the what we factor in as it relates to um, you know who can go, who can't go, and and so we keep that big picture um, in mind best we can. So going back to Zay for a moment, how much of his maybe early season struggles, if you would assess it as that, have, have been come from his adjustment to maybe a new role with you know, more playmakers? Yeah, well, you know when you look at our. In our defense and our offense, there's, there's different levels of continuity. And we've talked about this uh, even in here at length in the preseason and training camp. You know, the defense is a year, year and a half ahead in terms of the continuity. And then offensively, we've got eight, nine new players um, just in the starting lineup, really, for the most part, give or take. So, um, <clears throat> and as it relates to Zay in, in that, I mean, look, there's, there's getting familiar with, there's getting comfortable with the offense, the system. Um, he's had some good plays this year. He's made some critical catches for us in a couple of the games before. Um, so, you know, I expect he'll bounce back. Is there a level of disappointment? And I know this is kind of looking back, but, I mean, do you talk to Deion Dawkins about what he said or at least what the Patriots thought he said, um, you know, in moving forward uh, as far as bulletin board material might be? Yeah, we, we talk about those things a lot um, in terms of um, uh, making sure that we um, go through the process the right way. And that's continuing to develop uh, our young players and and um, and uh, continuing to put our best foot forward every week. I know uh, we talked about Frank since he's been here, but in, albeit in a loss, not the personal accolades, but for him to have 15,000 yards in his career to be on the field for that, to see that, to be a part of that, and get to know him, what was that like for you? Yeah, I mean it's a great honor, right? Great honor just to for all of us who are there. Great environment overall. Um, separate of, of the Frank conversation, but great environment. Really appreciate the fans. Um, just, a, just a great environment and uh, a lot of energy. And then to see Frank accomplish what he accomplished, um, what an honor. What an honor just to be there, as whether you're a coach um, or a fan. Just a, a great honor to, to say you, you've witnessed that. Josh talked last week about learning from his mistakes against Cincinnati, in particular maybe some of the ill-advised decisions uh, on where to go with the ball. Uh, prior to getting hurt yesterday, did you feel like he improved on that? And, and if not, why do you think that is? Yeah, no, we 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 obviously um, have a lot of have a lot of work to do right there, and uh, that's an ongoing message. If you were in our team meetings, you would you would know we talk about that a lot, and that's an ongoing message. It'll continue to be an ongoing message um, um, every day because the ball is important. You see the results of it. Our players know the results of it. Um, I mean, you know, if you look at the numbers, then numbers are numbers, right? But at the end of the day, that's a stat. Uh, that if you win that stat, that turnover margin stat. Usually you're going to put yourself with a chance to win the football game. We didn't win it. It wasn't even close. Um, and we still had a chance to win the football game. So there's some positives in that. And then there's some things, obviously, to your point, Jay, that we've got to continue to address. Is it frustrating, though, that you are addressing it so much and the improvement has not shown up yet? Well, it's, it's, um, it's, it's more concerning than frustrating. It's concerning from the standpoint of um, developing our players and, and and players getting the message, and, and Josh is going to continue to learn. He's a young player, and he's got the ball in his hands on average roughly 65 times a game just from the snap alone. So he's got to continue to learn. He'll continue to, to work at it. I know he's working at it, and, uh, and we'll continue to be there uh, right there alongside him. John, I think that all of the sacks on third down yesterday, uh, I think that's right. Nobody else to correct me if I'm wrong. But, um, is there a common thread on those and why they just – I just say Tim. Yeah, I'd say overall, and that's a good observation. I'd say overall, uh, we're just in those third and long situations. Um, you know, fourth and long situation, they come to block the punt. You know, we've got to play better complementary football, um, so it connects. All three phases connect, and, and we don't put ourselves in those situations. I mean, those are tough situations to come out of um, every week, let alone against a, a defense of that caliber. Sean, 
Sean, looking at the film, defensively, did they do anything unique that maybe surprised Josh and the offense as a whole? Uh, I mean, they're a good defense, you know, well-schemed, well-coached, um, tough defense. They've got playmakers at every level. Um, I would say overall, uh, not necessarily, but at the end of the day, they did, they, they, uh, they outperformed us and out-executed us. So we've got to go back and look at our process, look how we're doing things, um, what we're emphasizing, what we're not emphasizing, and then it all comes back to fundamentals. Are our fundamentals carrying over from practice to the game, uh, and, and can we execute at a high level throughout a game? And, and so we have to continue to double down and, and, uh, and dig into that. Sean, beyond just not forcing the ball into too tight of a window, how can Josh improve when a defense makes him stay in the pocket? <clears throat> yeah, take what the defense gives you. Go through your progression and take what the defense gives you. On the block punt, why was there no adjustment made when the only one kind of showed that they were yeah, it's you know it's it's kind of a cat and mouse game as far as that goes. So one thing leads to another, and um, you know so we just felt like you know we needed to execute at a better, uh, at a higher degree in that situation. Matt, whether there was an adjustment or not, there were some adjustments that were going on that um, that uh, you know uh, we need to execute better, and then throughout the game continue to adjust, and then week to week adjust as well. Does Corey have the freedom to call a date there? Does he have the arm to? Yeah, I'm not going to – getting into that would lead to strategy, and, and so I'd rather not get into that right now. Who makes that call when you're out there and reading as to what's going to happen from the other side? Who on the on the punt unit is recognizes it and communicates? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of people. It's our center. It's our personal protector. It's our punter. It's our wings. I mean, there's a lot of communication going on out there, um, and that communication um, is important to execution as well. Is there a, for lack of a better metaphor, a center fielder like there is in baseball where the center fielder calls it, that's what happens? Because you just mentioned a lot of different guys can be yelling different things. Yeah. But at some point, somebody has to make a decision as to whether or not we're in the right center. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, every team's different. So we're a little different than some teams, and there's a lot of teams that use the personal protector. So um, at the end of the day, we, all have to be on, we have to be on the same page. Did you, did you, oh, go ahead. Well, again, getting into that, Tim, is like I'm going to tell them our calls. I'm not going to get into who calls what uh, because there's strategy involved in that. So, Did you get a sense that on that drive that the Patriots started on the five when you challenged them on the, on, on the one-yard uh, game, did you get a sense that that drive was, was pivotal, pivotal and, and, and you were just trying to stem their momentum and you didn't succeed on the challenge, but yet Mike had got the interception? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're right, John. I mean, look, when you I challenged twice yesterday, um, you know, when you've got Tom Brady and you got a chance having him backed up to get off the field, um, you know, that's that's the reason why I threw the flag on that one. I knew it was going to be close. Um, the intel I had from the from above said it was going to be close, but I felt like why give him another chance with a, with an elite quarterback like that? And then the one on the OPI, what I thought was OPI, I thought that was a big play. Um, so both, you know, I felt like you know we're were reasonable, reasonably good challenges. Now they didn't work out, um, and then we lost a timeout in the, um, the third quarter, I believe, or the yeah, third quarter, fourth quarter. Uh, we had uh, we had a player go down right before we took the field for punt return, and, and so I didn't get the intel, and he went down right before, and, and uh, so we had to burn a timeout there. Just making it was fourth and four, I think, right there. So unfortunate situation. Um, you know, those are ones you go back and look at. Is there anything we could have done differently? And the player in this case went to the trainers right before we took the field for punt return. So the communication got to me as soon as it needed to be, but we couldn't get the communication to the field. So I don't think in close to 20 years in the NFL I've ever had that happen. Um, but we, something, again, we can learn from. I'm just saying that that drive seemed to change the <coughs> complexion of the game. That 90, the one that ended with Micah's interception. Yeah, big play. That was where really the game Micah stopped. Really big did. play. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can – force field goals or take the ball away in the red zone, those are big. I mean, we knew going into the game it was going to be uh, a game like it was. It was a battle, um, two good football teams out there, and, and um, the, guys, the guys put it out there. You know, they, they, didn't, they didn't leave anything left in the tank. And, and um, so it was a good battle. It was good effort, uh, tough football. And, and um, again, we've got to be more fundamentally sound so we, we can execute at a higher level.
Well, there was a few times the play clock ran down. A yeah. couple of timeouts were taken, delay game. Anything specific you can point to why that happened? Yeah, again, that's, you know, it's two weeks in a row. Again, um, just we've got, again, that's where I'm getting back to execute at a higher level. We can carry over our fundamentals. We get the play call in. We can execute. Um, and so, you know, really, um, we've got to be more disciplined and, and more efficient um, from snap to snap. Where do you think the league, I'm sorry, Joe, the league or coaches are in their discovery phase for challenging pass interference? Yeah. Um, you know, Tim, I, I think, again, just, um, you know, it's, I think we're finding, uh, we're, we're, we're finding out is the best way to say it. We're finding out. Um, whether that takes us till next week or continue, I think it's just an ongoing deal, right? It's an on, there's humans involved, so it's an ongoing deal, and, and I understand that. And so um, the way they called it was the way they called it. We respect that, and we move forward. How does the NFL communicate with you, maybe on a week-to-week basis? I know that sometimes they send it out to the media, things that they want to highlight. Are they, sh- are they emphasizing... All right, now this is what we're talking about here, or this yeah. was... No, they do a good job of sending out videos, uh, tutorials. So you're not on your own. Yeah, no, and we do our own research, but they do a good job of sending out educational tutorials from week to week um, to help us, you know, to help educate the staffs on, on how it's going to be officiated. Sean, this is your third time through as a, as a coach. Um, what, do you find the, the first loss of the year to be a bit more difficult to get over for both you Well, I mean, we don't, you know, listen, we, we want to win every game, right? We're, here, we're, we're highly competitive uh, people, and, and I believe we're changing a mindset here as well as the culture. And, and part of the changing the culture is changing the mindset of, of uh, you know, expecting to instead of hoping to. And so um, I believe that's the direction we're headed. And so anytime you lose from the time you're this tall um, to, the, to the time you're a pro football player in this case, it's hard. Um, and it, and it's, but it's important. That you that you keep your mind about yourself and you take ownership of your part, your one eleventh of it, and then you you apply it the next week to grow stronger, uh, and that again goes back to the growth mindset that we get stronger um, each and every week with that in mind. Sean, if Matt, Sean, if Matt does have to play, what does he bring your offense? Obviously, small sample size yesterday. Hmm. Was yeah, he's well respected. I mean, he's he's well respected by our team. Um, He's earned everything he's gotten here. I mean, you guys saw what he's done uh, and how he carries himself week to week, day to day around the building. Um, so he's highly prepared every week, whether he's played or he hasn't, which is the life of a, in this case, a backup quarterback. And um, But the, there's a lot of internal belief in Matt Barkley, and um, we know he'll be ready to go if, if need be this week. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.